Well, well, AMD is introducing a, something really good over here and I can't wait to get my hands on this. Oh, um, we are recording already? Okay, so sorry guys. So, welcome to GoFries. Pardon my terrible acting, but here we are today. And we're going to talk about the new GPU that's coming out today. More like announced today. I don't know when they're coming it. Uh, when are they... Uh, getting it to the market but definitely it's announced today right now the rx 5500 series graphics card when i say series simply because there's a desktop model and there's the mobile model which is the 5500m now let's go over to the press deck that i have from amd so we're going to look at the specs right now the 5500 i'm going to talk about the desktop version i'm uh, first because well actually let's just have a look at these specs right now both of them are of similar specs you can see that the t-flops the clocks are a bit different but the desktop has 8 gigs of vram while the mobile version has 4 gigs and both of them are on 128-bit interface and if you are asking whether this is navi brought down to an affordable level yes it is it is a 7 nanometer technology and it has 6.4 billion transistors, 4.0 PCIe support, so on and so forth. And now let's have a look at this one. In this graph, you see that there's power improvement. And based on the performance here, they compare it to the RX 480. Now, given 12% boost in performance, I'd say it is around the RX 590's performance level. But if you remember, I reviewed the RX 590 and I didn't like it because the RX 590 is a Polaris refresh being refreshed. I hate refreshes. I can tolerate with one refresh, but from 480 to 580 was already a refresh and 580 to 590 is another refresh. So it's a refresh of a refresh. I don't like it. And in fact, the RX 590 had higher power draw than the Vega 56, at least based on my test. Vega 56 has almost doubled the performance of the RX 580, 590 and yet it consumes less power than, than the 590 so I definitely dislike the 590. I love the RX 480 when it was released but 580, yeah, 590, yuck. But, 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 this one if you look at the graph, you see that the performance 12% boost, it's really, it's around RX 590 performance level but the power draw is 30% less than the RX 480. The RX 480 is to be, well, on the graph it's 100 to 1. I remember it's around, around maybe about 120. But regardless, the, the, the power draw, 30% reduction of the power draw of the Polaris is definitely good. So if it can really maintain at around that 70 watts power draw, and deliver the performance of the RX 590 that is superb, I tell you. I, I, like the, I like the performance level of Polaris, don't get me wrong. I just don't like the refresh and the refresh. And now with this one, we are really seeing something um, significant. You see, from the RX 480 to the 590, the performance boost is there. But what I didn't like, the one that really troubled me the most is the power draw. The RX 590 drew more than 200 watts. So if this one has an RX 590 performance and draws only less than 100 watts, that's a significant improvement and much thanks to the 7 nanometer technology as seen on the Navi cards. Now let's move a bit down to another. So on this slide, you'll see that it's talking about the technologies. Yes, it has GDDR6 memory. And moving on, according to this one, it has 60, over 60 frames per se second for AAA gaming. I think that's great. For 90 plus FPS esports gaming, I think it's good. Personally, I play at 100. I aim for anywhere from 100 to 144 hertz. But if it's 90 plus, I, I guess at uh, full HD, if you reduce a bit of the resolution, you, you will get to around that 144 range. You don't need to hit 144 frames per second to just to play at 144 refresh rate. As long as it is of a good margin near that one, it's good enough. So 
given the titles here, you see that um, NVIDIA NVIDIA card that is being compared to this uh, AMD's RX 5500 is the 1650, which is um, quite far apart. So uh, I'm guessing that they didn't put 1660 because the performance would look a, little, a lot closer. Oh, by the way, this is the RX 580. So if we're going, I'm going to go back to RX 580 topic a, a bit later. Now we're talking about price. So now, kind of the performance. As you can see from this graph, it compares to the 1650, but not the 1660 or the 1660 Ti, of which I think it will be closer to that range. So 1660 Ti will be a bit on the uh, higher price point. So my guess, my guess is that it will be around the price of the 1660, which is about say 200 US. Over, over in Malaysia, I'd say maybe around 800 to 1000 Malaysian Ringgit range and will be definitely taking over the spot of the RX 580 or RX 590. If you are intending to buy any 580 or 590 right now, please don't buy any of them. It's for your own good. I'm sorry AMD that I have to tell people to not to buy your things right now simply because it is from what I see definitely a significant improvement over these guys that i don't know if you be able able to sell it off at the current price now i don't think so probably half the price given that performance level should be similar maybe a bit higher than the 580 should be around the 590 range but power draw wise significantly less now let's um, look at an, another graph here is like what i mentioned compared to the 1650 and then let's look at the other one which is for the the rx 55500 m which is a mobile one so overall my take is that this is definitely the gpu to look out for i'm sure you've heard of rumors about nvidia coming out with the 1660 super i would have another video about that that's for sure do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Definitely, we're going to talk about that. But for now, the 5500 series is, def is definitely amazing. And as you can see, it's 55, right? So you have a 5700 amazing stuff, then our 55. So definitely, we can expect a 5600 to come quite soon. Uh, truth be told, I do not have any dates on that. But I, I'm definitely looking forward for the 5600 as well, given that um, on spec so far, the 5500 looks superb. So uh, let's um, wrap up this uh, session. You can, based on my speculation, um, based on based on my <laughs> my speculation, based on what I've seen so far. Well, you see the thing about AMD is that in the past I do not trust their presentation. I admit that I always. Take it with a pinch of salt. Every brand boasts their perf um, their their performance on their presentation deck, and it tends to be a little higher. So, and I, I felt that way for many of AMD's releases. Um, not just Polaris. Uh, there's a Vega as well. Um, but but the the Navi series and the Ryzen so far has been quite spot on based on their presentation. I like that. I like that they've. I feel that they've improve on their presentation don't um you might feel otherwise we, we can agree to disagree but like what i said if just based on what i've seen so far if it really is true an rx 590 performance but and and maintaining the current price of the the rx 580 590 range and to have the power draw going from above 200 watts during, during or during load that is going from above 200 watts down to below 100 watts now that's amazing that's super duper huge reduction think about it this way if it was drawing 220 watts for the rx 590 and maintaining the same performance and if it now draws about 70 or 80 that's that's more than half reduction of the power draw. And that is the thing that attracts me the most about this, this uh, RX 5500. So, and it, it targets full HD gaming. So instead of spending um, in 
whatever country you are in, it should be about 400, 450 range for the RX 5700, 5700 XT models. Over in Malaysia, the price is a bit higher for, for us. It's about um, around anywhere from about 1,008 to above 2,000 for the RX 5700 XT and all that. So with the 5500, um, definitely far less performance, but for full HD gaming and all that, at around the RM800 to 1000 price point, I'd say it's superb. And if the build quality of the AIB is good, going up to 1100, I might be might be considered. But I, if I'm not mistaken, the GTX 1660 Ti cards are around that above the RM1000 price point. So I don't think they they will be going there. So this is just how I see it. I hope I hope what I I speculated here is correct. That the price point is at US 200 or less, meaning that over in Malaysian market between RM800 to 1000. So, all right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let's hope uh, the, it's announced already. So let's see whether the card, the cards, especially from the AIB models, come to us soon enough. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.